Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Local Chat, episode 174. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week, just just sneaked out with only one guilty verdict today, is one Ian Gibson. <laughs> That's right. Uh, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, just uh, go out of Google and Google Trump Rule 34. You'll see exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Big news today. <laughs> You'll uh, have to look it up. Oh, you just got to look it up. It's incredible. I didn't even put that together. That's uh, did you did you come up with that joke? No, I saw it on Twitter, but it's uh, also a usual thing on Twitter. Is any anytime any it's it's a recurring joke on twitter that anytime something big happens somebody usually just goes oh this happened because of uh, uh, there's uh, a law called law 34 oh, you just have to no. google blank rule 30 i know that part but i just thought it was doubly funny because he was actually in a verdict was on 34, 34 counts, counts. So it really yeah. works out this time you could probably no, search I, I donald trump rule 34 i'm going to right now and it a would come up reaction folks it would come up with the uh Oh, wow. The very first thing is Rule 34 Donald underscore Trump. And then it's the top stories. Trump verdict. Trump verdict. Wow. So. <gasps> wow. That's I'm pretty, really glad. This you this know, link will forever be blue and I will never click it. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because it was already purple, but it will be blue now. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be blue now. <laughs> Go back in time. Jeez. Um, yeah, that's. Lordy. um that's a chit chat actually chit chat section since we don't have anything uh and jake was going to be here i was minding my own business last night on my phone uh re-watching giant bomb mario party parties because i have nothing else better to do with my life and i saw jake tweet about scavengers reign is moving over to netflix and people to watch it so they can get a season two and i was like i've heard uh -huh. good things about this show uh i don't have netflix anymore but i'm pretty sure it's still in hbo max so I went over to HBO Max and I watched two episodes and I watched eight more episodes today. Scavengers Reign on HBO Max or Netflix. Fantastic um, TV show, animated TV show. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go see it. Uh, it's really good. Ian, have you seen there, seen it or watched it? I have not. And I'm going to blame the show. So there's two things, right? One of it is my fault. One of it is the show's fault, right? I'll start with I'll start with my fault, mm -hmm. which is that everybody's like, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. And my immediate reaction is like, is it really? Because I keep getting fucking burned on this. I'll give you a perfect example. The fucking Fallout TV show. I had to f Maggie and I had to force ourselves to finish it because it was not good. That is a bad TV show, folks, and you should not enjoy it. And everybody was loving it. So the fact that it's like everybody was immediately like, this is so good. You have to watch it is off putting to me, quite frankly. Okay. That's my fault. OK, second thing, which I think is their fault. This has not been advertised that well, and the only advertising is just like Western animation post-apocalypse brown and dirt and that's terrible advertising that's like advertising zombie stuff in 2014 it's like there's a million of that what is special about that so i don't mm -hmm. think this show this show has not been appealing to me in any way whatsoever except for some of the testimonials from people like yourself that's it so yeah. i have not i have not watched it. i've deliberately not watched it so you know convince me to convince me to watch yeah, it yeah i would say fallout reaction is more of pleasantly surprised it's a it's a decent show and not like halo unless you think it's as bad as halo then i don't know what to i say. was thinking about this i think it i think it is i think it is maybe i think it is just barely better than halo <laughs> okay that's wild but i mean your opinion's your own um but i would also say this isn't like something this isn't this show isn't like fallout show tv show and like halo tv show is just like what my idea of like an abc power hour show it's like not great but it for some reason appeals to millions of people who say it's fantastic like that's where i place like fallout and and halo and all that sort of stuff and versus this is just like a like a castlevania or something else where it's just like a good show that nobody okay, knows yeah. about um yeah and i, I genuinely enjoy great. it i really like the uh animation style in it also it is the first science fiction thing 
I have seen in an incredibly long time that is like, this is an alien planet, nothing works the way you think it will, because it's an alien fucking planet. Got it. Um, and that, I think, is my favorite part about it. It's also absolutely brutal um, and and pretty pretty great. So. See, now I'm in. Now I'll watch, so watch it. All they needed was, was a competent fucking advertising campaign. Yeah. Yeah, I had heard yeah. about it once or twice. Actually, I don't think I ever heard about that show not from someone. And I think that's probably whoever their mark, like H, whoever bought it to publish it, probably just was like, "Oh, we're just buying this to see if it does well. We're not trying to push it." Um, yeah, but I hope they get a season two. I need to finish season one, but hopefully, if the last couple of episodes aren't garbage, uh, it'll be a it'll be a fun time. Uh, folks, that's the chit chat section. Now we get to move on to the better part of the show that I like to call games we've been playing. Um, I'll go. I'll do the one game that we both haven't played, which is over the weekend. I went up to visit my parents with Karen, and I brought, brought the Switch. And I thought I would end up playing a lot of Thousand Year Door, but I ended up playing a lot of Mario Kart Eight for no apparent reason other than like we didn't have a cart. We didn't have the Scooty bike, Scooty Putt Junior, whatever. Uh, uh -huh. in and I was like, why don't we have this? That's weird. And then I looked it up, and Mario Kart 8 is one of those games that it's like every 50 coins you unlock something, and then every 100 coins after that you unlock something, yeah. and the unlocks are randomized. Yeah. So it's like, oh, fuck. And then I saw if you get like if you beat the time trial ghosts in e every one of the original, uh, courses time trials uh you get golden wheels and you can unlock golden parachutes and stuff like that and i was like i didn't realize there were time trial courses for each level so i just started just started shitting those out uh they're like just hard enough where you, you get three uh mushrooms and you have to like decide what three uh uh shortcuts you're using and then each ghost on each map is usually a different nintendo person so it's like some of them uh -huh. I was like failing, failing and finally beat them by like half a second and a couple others I was beating them by like six or seven seconds. So it was really fun to be like, you're not necessarily going against the best. You're going against the best person that they picked for that, like off the Nintendo team. Um, yeah. So I played a shit ton of that over the weekend. Uh, and also all those new uh, courses that came out with the uh, expansion pass. And there's a couple new maps in there that are great, but all the tour maps are awful and I hate them. Um, they're absolutely terrible. Their only redeeming quality is their like real world locations, which is cool. Um, Wait, what are the tour maps? Aren't those just aren't those just maps from previous? They're, Mario the Kart tour games? maps are from Mario Kart Tour, which is the mobile Mario Kart game. Oh Jesus! Why did they bring those in here? Um, and they're not. I, I shouldn't say they're bad but they change every lap like the arrows change not the like environment changes so it's really you don't like ever learn the map very well unless you do the whole thing multiple times and then on top of that you like can't there's areas you can't leave like traps for people because you won't be driving there again it's the only time you drive through it oh because it's drastically yeah, changing. yeah and it's just like frustrating and also they're really not designed they feel like they're not designed to be raced that way, uh, which is the other yeah. annoying part. Because <laughs> you're just like suddenly... Mario Kart... <laughs> yeah, Mario Kart Tour is is very simplified controls. So it's yeah. weird that they would have maps made for a touch control game brought into a normal control yeah. game. It, it, it's annoying, but I mean, it's cool to have more Mario Kart maps. I'm not like... But it's just like, it do they don't really feel good. Um, when, especially when they're mixed in with like great mario kart mario kart maps from previous mario karts and you're just like what is this dog shit in between these good levels that you're you're serving me um but yeah it, it, it's kind of annoying so yeah mario kart 8 uh deluxe 10 years old today i think or this week uh and it's still yes. still good actually deluxe is an eight is 10 years old today uh it's still pretty good i unlocked a mercedes uh so we're we're doing fine in the in the mario kart 8 uh economy uh, second uh, game I've been playing is uh, I started Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door the uh, Nintendo won't say it the, but the remaster or, or remake whatever ex I never played the original so I don't know what extent it is uh, that just came out of the GameCube game uh, and I have put about maybe half an hour 45 minutes into it and I have not played it since 
uh, mostly because I am still fatigued from playing Origami King this year, and I don't think it's time to play another I Mario part, uh, no, another Mario that's... Paper Mario. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's it. And because I, I have not played Origami King for year and a half, two years, and I dropped that after like an hour or two because I did not like the combat system. Mm-hmm. And I've played, I, I, so I took a thousand year door on my switch on vacation. I had a five day vacation, lots of downtime, lots of picking up the switch and playing the game. Um, and, and mostly enjoying it. And I get to, I get to the end of the vacation. And I'm like, Hey, I wonder how much time I have on this save. I'm probably like 10 hours in, right? Four <laughs> hours. A thousand year door is a really fucking slow game. It's really slow. Um, and, and, and that's not me shitting on the game. It's just you talking about how, you know, maybe you're not ready for another Paper Mario Mario because you played one recently and that's why you're not into it. No, I, I think it's because the game is slow and the game is excruciatingly slow at the start where they're like, walk around for 15 minutes and then have a two turn battle and then walk around for 15 minutes. And it's like the game's really well put together, but it is, it, it feels like a long game where they really could have shortened it, you know? Yeah. And I'm struggling with that. I will say that uh, combat system's 10,000 times better. It's so much better. Yes. <laughs> and you can yes. do the like, and you can do the B block parry that kills the enemies. And it's so great. Yep. And you can just like, you're like, if you're good at it, you can just beat the enemies super fast. Where in the other one, no matter what, it was always like two plus rounds and you wanted to scream. Uh, yeah, yeah, way better than, but I agree. I, I just got to the first area, I guess the, like where the dragon is. Um, I oh, just yeah, got yeah. there. Gotcha. Uh, and I think that was the end of kind of the end of the tutorial. I, I will agree. It's slow. It's you forget how much RPG is in, uh, thousand like paper Mario stuff. Uh, it's yeah. quite a lot of exposition <sighs> and talking. It's it's a lot of exposition and talking, but it also feels like it's a lot of it's a lot of overworld. It's a lot of going through areas where you've got to go through multiple screens to get to the next spot. Mm. And those screens have enemies in them. And then as part of the story, you're backtracking through those areas. And so it just it feels very I'm four hours in and I have the first of seven stars. And that's pretty much it. And I'm like. Honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to play any more of it because I just it, it's one of those games where if I sat down and played it for 30 minutes, I would feel like I made no progress. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the older I get, the more shit I got to do in my life, the more I want to relax. It's hard to relax when you sit down and play 30 minutes of a game and go. I, I looked up the time to beat. It's it's I think it's 30 hours. So if I sit down and do 30 minutes, it's like, well, I've got 59 more of those sessions before I beat this game. And it's like. Yeah. I, nothing against the game it's just not the right game for me right now yeah or on a, on a, or maybe ever honestly it's really enjoyable it's really well crafted but it's hard for me to enjoy a game that's slow paced yeah I, I the writing in origami king really carried me through that game and this is the same caliber um if oh, yeah, not better writing so i think um i think it'll be okay as i go through it but I, i'm gonna take a break because i don't i didn't want to force it and then be like i definitely not gonna come back to this game um, yeah. So I think I'm going to let Karen not uh, I'm al actually sorry. I should rephrase that. I'm allowing my wife to play a video. <laughs> no, I I'm going to let Karen uh, play it uh, now because she was going to hold off and watch me play it. And I was like, no, you play it and enjoy it. Um, but only when you're allowed to play <laughs> during the yeah. after dinner's cooked and the dishes are clean. Uh, let's be perfectly clear. Which which video game are you talking about? Cooking Mama? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Karen loves Cooking Mama. Uh, it's her favorite oh, game. We did. I, I don't know if I talked about it. We did complete Orcs Must Die three. Uh, we only have we the did. DLC yeah. stuff left, and we didn't want to pay for it and then burn out like a mission in. So uh, we didn't. We didn't do that. But we did. We did complete the campaigns and do some. It was fun because we finally got to do like the endless mode, which is kind of where yeah. the the fun is. Uh, and they have another mode, Scramble, we didn't try, which was like random stuff, which I thought sounded kind of cool, but. We had fun. It's, a, it's yeah. a still a a great free game to play. Yeah. Um, I um just just talk about Thousand Year Door a little bit. I I do really appreciate this game. This game, if I didn't know this was a remaster, I, I wouldn't know that. 
because mm. the level of writing and like gameplay design and mechanics in this game, knowing that it came out for it came out for the GameCube originally, I believe. Um, yeah. It doesn't feel like a GameCube game. It's aged incredibly well. Now, I'm sure they put some quality of life improvements and they've upped the graphics and stuff on the Switch version, but I'm also pretty sure they have not drastically changed it. And it feels it feels great as a game. Uh, my my complaints about pacing notwithstanding, and it feels like a really good Mario RPG game. I, I think this is just me. I try to play Origami King. I try to play Sticker Star. I try to play Superstar Saga. I think this is me just finally realizing the Mario RPG games are not for me because they're always going to yeah. be a little bit simplified, a little bit slow, a little bit story heavy. And that's not a fault of the game. That's just not going to go towards my play style. Um, so it seems like a great game. It's just it's not for me. OK, you hear it here, folks. Um, don't play it. It's awful. Um, next up, Satisfactory, we can talk about now. Ian, uh, myself hey. and my brother, Zach, have uh, finished crafting our planet and we are now crafting a factory on the planet. Uh, we have moved over to Satisfactory. We have a server up and running which is great because we don't I don't have to be playing every single time we want to play the game. Uh, we uh, uh, found a good service to use for that, which I was excited about. Uh, and uh, and we're, we're cracking away. I think we just hit oil today. Is that what you hit earlier? Yeah, I hit oil. I think we're on tier four or five out of like eight tiers. So we're technically halfway through the game. We're kind of ripping through it. Um, yeah. we, we we've had it, I'll talk in kind of like survival crafting game terms. And if you've ever played one of these, you'll understand what I'm talking about. We've had at least one base rebuilt so far where we had to reorganize our uh, storage system. And I feel like we're hitting a we've automated a lot of stuff construction of it. But I feel like we're hitting a second point where we're starting to automate higher level technology items, which is exposing gaps in our lower level automation. Yep. And so now we're going to have to go back and redo that. And like you said, we've we've gone through uh, biofuel power. We're on coal power right now, and we're about to boot up oil power. Um, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying playing this with you guys because I've played this by myself twice now, and I have never gotten this far because this game is an absolute pain in the ass on single player mode. But I, but what's really great about the three of us playing is like we started together and we immediately found an area that had like three resource nodes. And it was just like, you do that node, I'll do that node, you do that node. And by the time I was done with my nodes, setting up the miner and the uh, constructor and the conveyor belts, I turn around and you guys are done as well. So it, as, as obvious as it sounds, having three people play makes everything go three times faster, but it also means if there's things you don't enjoy doing, somebody else can go do it and then you don't have to mess with that, you just get the output or the benefit of it. Um, and it's, it, it, I'm really enjoying it. I'm still not a big satisfactory fan, even, even ha like resolving the pacing issues by having more people playing. It's still got some wonk in it, but, um, it is a lot more enjoyable playing with you guys. And it's nice having, it's nice just having a server because yeah. it's like, I'll wake up and I'll go, I got like 45 minutes before work. Let me just hop on. I love having just like long form, relaxed server podcast games where it's just like, I'll just hop in. I'll put some time in. Uh, unlike thousand year door i feel like i've actually gotten something done here and and <laughs> and i've done something as opposed to just sit here and read dialogue most of the time you know and that feels that feels really good so i'm I'm enjoying it there were uh, there were a couple days i would wake up take a shower get my cup of coffee and just do a shift of satisfactory we we're just like oh, i guess i'll uh, work on the factories for a bit because it feels like work but you're yeah. happy um and so yeah. i like i'm i rebuilt a whole steel or reinforced iron area and then i went and rebuilt my my whole steel factory and changed all that stuff up and then i was like oh we just yeah. unlocked the like suction tube travel system let me set up oh, like yeah. a subway network of this um and and i like um i i kind of paused because i i the thing i loved about planet crafters we all three had to be online to play to some extent because it meant we could like yes. split up tasks and work together and inform each other uh and so i i was playing a bunch this week by myself and then i was like oh, i'm just gonna wait until we have another night that all three of us can play so we can like get back on the same page the, the nice thing is um there on the right hand side you can there's public and private notes so you can like leave yeah. notes for yourself 
uh, and the other players on the server and they just pop up. So it, it's very helpful to be like, hey, I, I, I'm just getting off right now, but uh, I finished half of this and this is the other stuff. And these are kind of the priorities. So um, it, yeah. it's fun. It's it's great. I, I, get, I don't it is wearing a little thin on me like it's just it's annoying to play sometimes uh it just it doesn't quite feel great um and i think the factory setting is wearing me out a little bit faster than the planet crafter yeah. stuff did and there's that been that steam sale this week about uh open world crafting games and i keep looking at them being like oh what's our next one gonna be because i want to start looking sons forward the to the forest. next one. Oh, sons of the Factorio. I like the forest, but I don't know. Zach might get you might get too scared from Sons of the Forest. To be honest, with I you. could, I could. Yeah, uh, it's terrible. Uh, I did have I did have a bad moment with Satisfactory today, which is so. This afternoon, I went to our our main steel place, and I I tried to rebalance that a little bit because I noticed our steel beams output is still yep. not great, and and I balanced it, but I couldn't. I basically we have a bunch of machines built, and originally we were. Let's go. Let's go deep into this. So basically, the <laughs> the game does a good job of telling you what the input and output of each machine is. Uh, what the input and output of what each machine is. So, for example, you look at a machine that says, "I need sixty of ingredients per minute in order to make ninety output per minute." Right, and so you start doing the math where you're like, "Okay, if I need if this needs sixty per minute, then I need to go to the machine that's feeding it and make sure that can produce sixty per minute." And that needs 30 ingredients. Per, and, and so you're, you're doing all this math to basically have like a single source and splitting it. And then, oh, if I if I have a 90 out 90 per minute output and I put it into a three way splitter, then it's going to be 30 per minute to each of them. So it's not just it. You can't just throw more factories at the problem because that's not necessarily going to help. It's it's just going to leave you with machines that are waiting for ingredients. And our factory, our steel factory setup, we'd originally set it up like that, where we put a bunch of machines down and had it split. But then we pretty quickly realized, oh, we're not doing it efficiently. And so I, I keep going over there and trying to optimize it. And one of the cool tools you have to optimize it is you have these power shards, which lets you overclock a machine. So, so I'll give you an example. You know, if I have a one machine that's putting out 60 parts per minute and it's feeding into a machine that needs 90 parts per minute as its ingredients, I can put a power shard in the first machine, overclock it to 150%, and now it makes 90 parts per minute out, which exactly matches the 90 ingredients in on the second machine. So I've been trying to get those lined up and I have them lined up a little bit better on the on the the steel side because you you basically have to use power shards and overclocking to get the numbers to line up. It's not a one to one or a two to one. It's usually like a one point five to one. So you use the overclocking to get the numbers to line up to overclock. You have to find these glowing worms or snails or whatever out out in the in the world. So this afternoon, uh, I, I spent like an hour. I, I was I went all over the map. Well, I, I should say I went to a bunch of areas of the map we haven't been to yet. I picked up a whole bunch of, uh, I think they're called power slugs. Power slugs that are glowing. Uh, I use the zip line. Have you used the zip line yet in Satisfactory? So the zip line's actually really good because what the zip line lets you do is it's you hold it in your hand and you jump up and it turns any power line into a zip line. But but what that means, it's not it's not great for like long term transport. But what it means is if you see a cliff and you want to go up on top of the cliff all you have to do is just build a power line which you can do from a distance and then zip line up it so it's basically a way of like think of it almost like a like a grappling hook where you see somewhere you just look at it build a power line zip over to it so i was hopping all over the map really quickly just build a power line zip over build a power line zip over i probably picked up like 10 power slugs start to make my way back to the base misstep off of a cliff and I fall to my death, right? And I fall so hard that my body goes straight through the ground and into the underworld. <laughs> and I'm just like glitching out and I'm like, okay, whatever. And I respawn. When you die, you drop a crate. I go to where the crate's supposed to be. Crate's underground as well. Ugh. And I was like, and those slugs don't respawn. So I basically just lost like 10 slugs, which would have been like probably 16 or 18 power shards because of some of them are worth more. And I was like, fuck. So I, I, I have played once since then, but I was, but it was a little disheartening. And it was the first time I've hit a point in this game where I'm like, I need to step away for a bit. I, I got to step away. That is really upsetting to me. Um, 
But yeah, we're still having fun with it. I'm excited to finally beat it because I feel like Satisfactory has been in the back of my head. Something I, I keep wanting to play. I keep playing it occasionally and having fun, but having stress. But I'm always like, well, maybe it's better when we get to trains. Maybe it's better when we get to nuclear power. Maybe I, maybe it's cool with the jetpack, right? Mm. I'm excited for us to finally fucking beat this game so that I can say I have seen and played all there is in Satisfactory and I don't have to have that itch to play it anymore because yeah. I've I've given it all my time and energy and it has given back what it is capable of giving back. And I'm, I'm good to go from here. So I'm, I'm ready to be done with Satisfactory in a way. Yeah, I'm kind of there too. And yeah, the steel production, I have that other steel industry that's doing the reinforced and that one yeah. was getting split and I just shut down one of the machines and I was like, I'd rather have the uh, this back up a little bit than not produ and produce a little bit more than if I had more machines and it was like struggling yeah. to feed it. Uh, and then I also realized... Um, I hadn't set up the receiving side for the reinforced beam, so it was just feeding it into the into the ticket oh machine God. for a very long time until I logged uh, on. I was like, "Oh fuck!" Oh, that's funny. Uh, and other fun fact: those machines got clogged a couple times uh, because there was a yeah. power slug that it doesn't eat power slugs, uh, which thank there God. There was a power slug in. Yeah, there? I, I don't know I, how. I assuming I did it because I was cleaning out my inventory at one point and I must have misclicked. Because I was just throwing like oh, raw okay. like g garbage in there, uh, and then um, I don't think it eats ore. Um, no, it does eat ore. I fed it. Does ore it? Before. Okay, it had stopped on something else. Maybe it was coal. I'm not sure what it was, but it was. I I couldn't quite see into the machine, so I just like deleted the thing. The, the machine. The, yeah. the, the thing. So I never knew what it was because it just all went into my inventory. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's. I'm excited for us to uh, get done with it and see everything it has. I'm also excited to build more factories uh, and and get things done. Yeah. Started. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. it's, it's just fun. It's fun. And I was using the online calculator a bit today and uh, or the yeah, other day. To help and, out. And that's fun too. You're like, uh, th some of those have gotten great because you can like mark off the pieces you've already put down and you can rearrange mm -hmm. the web to like line everything up so you don't, uh, it's so good. So, very yep. good. Folks, those are the games we've been playing this week. Now it's time for the news. Today was the state of play from PlayStation. Ian Gibson, That's right. did you watch it? You know, I was uh, laying in a bed at about 6 o'clock this afternoon with the TV on, and I was like, oh, a state of play's happening. And I didn't watch it. Just kept watching Jack Ryan. Uh, <laughs> I don't mean to go back to Fallout, but I feel like Fallout and Jack Ryan are very similar. Where it's like, you don't expect much from the show, and the show has problems. But at least in Jack Ryan, it works. <laughs> like, like, the story and the characters make sense, and it's entertaining. Whereas in Fallout, it was just like, half the time, the story and characters, you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Why am I here? There is nothing interesting here happening except for jokes every now and then. And don't it's understand like, you. It's a fantastic show. I don't want to talk about it because the problem is if I I could sit down and write like three fucking pages of all the like very specific problems that show has. Like I I had the same I had the same it's it's a problem with Christopher Nolan. Uh, i oh, sorry, not Christopher. It's a problem with Jonathan Nolan because I had the same problem with Westworld. I had the same problem with uh, Interstellar. He's a terrible fucking writer. He writes these characters and he writes these plot points and they don't connect at all. And the dialogue doesn't fucking connect. So you have these characters who are doing one thing and then all of a sudden they're doing something else and they throw these lines out and you're like, what do you mean by that? That doesn't make any sense. And then you're like, why is this happening? And it, it's the same fucking problem in Fallout. Like he just does not know how to, how to write like a coherent story with convincing motivated characters. As, as pretty as it may look, as funny as it may be, he just can't write a fucking coherent story. Uh, I mean, whereas, I understood you know, it, so it worked for me. Jack Ryan has some of those problems, but at least it's at least it's like, you know what? I'm getting good spy craft. You know, I'm getting good spy craft and gunfights in this. Uh, anyways. Yeah. So uh, I didn't watch the state of play. Did you did you watch the state of play? I did watch the state of play. I stayed to uh, watch the state of play. 
I so the funny thing was I did not feel obligated to watch this because all of this leaked a couple hours before. Did you see that? No, I, I do not. Yeah, th <laughs> thankfully, I do not keep up with the news. Yeah, there was a set list. There was a set list for the state of play that leaked. And it as far as I can tell, I think the only thing on here that I'm not sure of was that there was going to be, quote, a Middle East game, a game from the Middle East. And I don't uh, know if that's one of these. Might have been Dynasty Warriors. Well, I, th uh, I think they meant like a game from a Middle East studio. Uh, uh, or not the where the wind where winds meet. I, I don't know. Uh, so anyways, let's um, let's go through this quickly. Any standouts for you? Anything um, worth giving a shit about? Uh, the uh, Monster Hunter World 2, Monster Hunter Rise, I think it's called, looks pretty great. Yeah, uh, that looks good. I'm excited for that. Uh, Astrobot yeah. has a new Astrobot game coming out. That still looks good. Bless. Looks like uh, I'm, great. I'm so happy. Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, I'm so happy they're finally being allowed to make a full fucking game. Because they did Astrobot Rescue Mission, which was a PSVR title only. And then they did Astro's Playroom, which was a pack in for the PS5 and which was good, but short. And they knocked it out of the park with both of those. So fuck yeah. Day one, I'm assuming this will be $70. I'll pay it. Astrobot's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, that Concord game get, got shown off. It is a PvP first person shooter, competitive hero shooter. It looked like yeah. Bargain Basement uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, and... <laughs> And I don't know, it, it could, I don't know how it's really structured. It could be good. I just, I don't know if there's room for a hero based shooter. Uh, and also, I think yeah. Sony thinks people on PC are going to play this. Uh, and, you know, with all the people who don't want to sign up with, for PlayStation accounts who own a PC, I don't think PC is really going to play it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's too many, there's too many, there's too many shooters right now, especially too many online competitive multiplayer hero shooters yeah, there's just too many of them yeah silent hill 2 looks looks good visually i don't know anything about silent hill 2 i don't know how people care about the remake uh they announced a new dynasty warriors which immediately made me want to be like we should play every dynasty warriors <laughs> on subjects oh, no. <laughs> um, i i've never i've only played a dynasty warriors demo on the 360 and i was like yeah think, this is cool and then i and then i had a friend who played a lot of them and he's like they're pretty empty but they're fun for a period and so i've been yeah. thinking about it but i think i may i think i may well i was about to say i'll hop in on this one but it's probably going to be fucking 70 dollars. i will play this game when it gets anyways. to playstation yeah, um, PS Plus. It's also coming to when PC to PS and Xbox Plus. Series X. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, so when this I comes put, to a, a, a subscription service, that's when I'll play this. I, I don't know why, but I put Dynasty Warriors in the same category as Katamari. It's like the game, I, when I want to play a Katamari game, I play that Katamari, when I want that style of game. Mm -hmm. When I want to fight thousands of people at the same time, I play a Dynasty Warriors game. I mean, yeah, the only other people unique. doing that is like Hyrule Warriors and then the demo which is for 99 nights which i used to play which is all the same type of game uh so yeah. I, it's I, a very I just it's a like very unique those yeah it's a yeah. very unique game it's its own genre uh uh the until dawn remaster looks pretty uh it looks way better than the original as someone who's recently looked at the original uh it looks very pretty uh you can get, get i guess get that cheddar again if you want to get that cheddar again um, it's probably the best acted, uh, not acted, I guess it's the best put together one. I think the quarry might be better, but those middle ones were, were kind of okay. But I love, I love Supermassive, so glad they're getting paid to do things. Uh, and that was pretty much it. There was an Alien, um, VR game, Alien Rogue Incursion, that PSVR looked, 2 exclusive. Yeah, that looked like Alien Isolation, which, uh, is a very great thing because people have wanted a sequel to that game for a very long time. Uh, but I'm not quite sure if, if that's what this is going to be. Yeah, yeah, it's just a shame that uh, nobody will ever be able to play it. Because yeah. there's... Nobody owns PSVR 2. Nobody why. owns it. Uh, listen, they already got paid. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest with you. It's, it's an okay state of play. I think it's pretty poor for an E3 showing. It, it's E3. You gotta do more than that. Um, yeah. 
And I feel like the big thing here was basically Astrobot because everybody loves that. Everybody's excited for it. And it had not been announced. The rest of it was just kind of updates to games that had already been announced, like Monster Hunter Wilds and Silent Hill 2. And then the rest of it is just non announcements, basically. So overall, I think it was I think it was I think it was weak. It's E3 time. You got to come out with an E3. True. Take him down a peg. Uh, what, what, uh, what are these Xbox rumors? Tell me about them. Yeah, so some of these are rumors, some of these are confirmed, but um, it is E3 season. Xbox has their showcase next weekend. Uh, so first up, we have a rumor that Doom the Dark Ages is going to be revealed at the Xbox Games Showcase. Uh, it is described as kind of a the next in the Doom series but it's supposed to be somewhat medieval themed. It's not super clear what the style will actually be, but essentially a new Doom game. Um, and then we also have Avowed and Indiana Jones previews that will be coming after the Xbox Games Showcase. Uh, this is a rumor as well. So they usually do these. Uh, these are previews for the press to play. So that means there will be hands on for these games, whereas previously there have not been. Uh, and then finally, this is not a rumor, but um, it is part of E3 because they are doing a Call of Duty Black Ops 6 showcase. They did announce that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will be out day one on Xbox Game Pass. You will not need to purchase a higher tier or whatever. It'll just be out on Game Pass. That was rumored for a little bit, especially last week, but they've officially announced it. Uh, any of these rumors or news pieces for Xbox kind of making you excited? I mean, I'm looking forward to Avowed and Indiana Jones. Um, mm -hmm. Doom Eternal didn't do much for me, so but I think this sounds intriguing enough with the medieval stuff that I could be uh, very much into it. Um, and then I would rather them put all the other Call of Duties on Xbox Game Pass instead of yes. Six. But I will say, I'm excited to play Black Ops Six, and let me tell you why I'm excited for it. There's a couple things. Uh, I do still like to play Call of Duty games. I have not played them in years because they cost money. So the fact that you're telling me I am getting a free AAA shooter that has a campaign and the campaigns are usually pretty good. It, it costs it's nothing, right? It's zero dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I'll play it. It's it's kind of the same reason why I played the last one I played was um, Black Ops Cold War. And the only reason why I got it was because I it came out shortly after the PS5 and I had the PS5 and I heard that it had dual sense support. So like mm. the triggers felt really good in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War with the PS5 controller. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do that. You know, the, I, I was a big fan of the Call of Duty series previously. I kind of fell off after Modern Warfare 2 and um, having a price tag on those has basically prevented me from even trying the newer games. And like you said, they never go on sale. So the fact that you, that I can't get them cheap in a Steam sale really prevents me from playing them. But if you're going to tell me that going forward, every Call of Duty game is going to be free day one on Game Pass. And for somebody like me, where all I do is play the single player, that's pretty much it. I barely play the multiplayer. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll play a triple A eight hour FPS campaign for free every every fall. Why not? I feel like this is this is a smart move. I don't know how the money looks, but I feel like I'm in a way the target audience where I don't play those games anymore because they cost money. And now yeah. they're going to put me back in the in the ecosystem. I think that's a lot of people going like that might be their strategy to get people shift away from PlayStation, be like buy the Xbox game, uh, Xbox Series X, get Game Pass and you get a free game when your Black Ops yeah. comes out play with your your friends um i couldn't think of how to work it in but i was trying to come up with a joke uh that you once petitioned to have it called be called white ops <laughs> instead of black ops and i i couldn't work are it there in. any <laughs> you know now that you mention it i think all the call of duty characters are white all the main ones <laughs> no there's the, the so Brit fucking... british guy in four uh it's black the it's one just joins, so fucking stupid that that people get into it's so fucking stupid that people get into the Call of Duty stories and the characters. Yeah. Like, oh my God, Soap is back. And I'm like, what, the generic fucking one-liner guy that you shoot stuff with? Like, it's, it's like, y'all got to calm down. I don't know. You know? I, I mean, yeah, because 
when four came out, like they were cool characters, and you're like, oh, Price is back in this one, and then they're like, Price is the staple character of these games. It's just like, yo, you stole him from Call of Duty two, uh, from one of the levels. So like, don't pretend he's some sacred guy. Yeah. Now. <laughs> like, what do you want? From yeah. That? That's yeah. Plus, uh, I, I believe this has been kind of confirmed through all the teasers. Black Ops six takes place during. I believe it's Desert Storm. So early '90s Iraq, America. Fuck yeah, put me in that. What, what's the Black fucking... Ops reveal of Desert Storm? Oh, I don't, I don't know. You mean like what's the behind the scenes yeah, story? Like nine, like like nine eleven was JFK. No, no, it's it's just that uh, the U.S. propped up Saddam during the '80s war with Iran and gave him all the weapons in the gave him all the weapons and the biological contaminants, and then Saddam turned on them. Wait, sorry, that's the real story. Uh, <laughs> Oops, forgot about that. Oops. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited. I, I talked about Cold War on local chat. How Cold War went some places. It actually did have a a a good story it had a twist in it that was very surprising that they played through so like i said it's a free triple a fps campaign like are there better fps campaigns that come out regularly no there's no. not <laughs> like the last good one was probably titanfall 2 but it's not like battlefield's doing good fps campaigns and they don't come out regularly like to think the last... didn't even have a campaign what's the last fps campaign i've played Halo Infinite, Probably. not very good. Yeah, it, that's what I mean. Is it, it used to be saturated market AAA FPS campaigns, but there's not really there anymore. So fuck yeah, I'll play it. I'll sit down and play it for six, seven hours. Why not? Man, the gunplay always feels good. Oh, I hope. I bet that. I bet that new. Um, if anything, that new uh, Judas will at least play pretty well, since it's basically yes. Bioshock. Uh, that'll play it. Yeah. I don't know about the story, but it'll. it'll get those yeah. narrative legos together but the gameplay will at least be pretty good yeah that's the other uh that's the other another e3 rumor is bioshock bioshock 4 really will get announced they're working on it i believe they've they've said they they are working on who's, it who's doing it it's not i, I can't remember i can't remember who but it's 2k 2k still 2K. owns the license so so they have a God, studio working please don't on be it. terrible but please be as bad as the pretty okay multiplayer of two um well, we'll probably we'll probably just get we're probably going to get Bioshock 4 and Judas in the same year, and they're both probably going to be OK. That's my bet. And Bioshock, as someone who recently played through those games, one and three are great. Two's OK. I three, I think, is still the best uh, only because you get to live in that world a little bit. One is the yeah, worst. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, one it, it happening after the fact is it just it's that taste you get in three that you can't go back and play yeah yeah three three to me the big thing that pissed me off about three was that okay you remember in one how you could go to machines and you could upgrade your weapons and you would choose you'd be like i want a better fire rate or i want more damage right and then it would yeah. modify the weapon in your hand three didn't do that you could not upgrade your weapons you just picked up a new weapon with better fire rate and then you looked at it and you're like this is just my old weapon with something slapped on it and it was like this it felt like they took away a mechanic from the first game it was really weird the way they did I it i think i think three did have upgrades but you it wasn't it was like specific you had to find the upgrades for the weapons it wasn't like they were sold uh. in specific places it wasn't what you're saying where i could go to the machine and upgrade any weapon and yeah um, and you would see it it, yeah. it was just like it was like it, i know it sounds really small but it's like in one like you're saying it felt like you were progressing through the world and you had a connection to your gun and you were making decisions to update your gun whereas in three it was like oh i don't have to upgrade my gun to make it a submachine gun i just pick it up and it's a different yeah. gun and it and that, that just made it more of a generic FPS. So one was more immersive I, simmy too. So I like, yeah. I understand them doing yeah. it. And I hope Judas is, has, has some immersive sim still in it. Um, yeah. yeah. So anyways, we're, we're going to get to Bioshock games soon. And I, I think my expectations are probably the same for both, like eight out of 10 for both of them. Good things and bad things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's hit the games news real quick. Oh, I, I will just say we're still working on our E3 coverage for next week. Um, we are probably going to do it all through the Discord, and I'll throw the Discord link in the chat. 
And what I mean by that is in previous years, we have streamed our live watch alongs of E3 press conferences. Um, and that is boring and stressing. And it's just not worth the effort most of the time for us to sit there and watch a two hour Xbox press conference and be on camera talent at the same time. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're probably going to set up some uh, channels in the discord so that if people want to watch the press conference together, we can all gather in a chat channel or a chat thread and watch it together and, and react by text and paste screenshots from certain trailers and things. Uh, so we'll try and do that. Um, and we'll have some more announcements for that via Twitter and the discord soon. So don't worry, we will have some, some E3 coverage for this year. Um, speaking of games, video games, we've got four stories here related to video games. Uh, let me hit through them real quick and then uh, you can tell me what you're interested in. Will Star Citizen has passed the $700 million mark in terms of money raised for the game. And no, there still is not a release date. Uh, Xbox has reached an agreement with a Batman Arkham Trilogy creators with their new studio for a new AAA game that will be made for Xbox. Uh, Sony is making a PSVR 2 adapter for PC support so that you can use the PSVR 2 headset for PC VR games. And Amazon Games has signed a publishing deal with Maverick Games for a new narrative-led open-world driving game. Maverick Games comes from uh, former developers of the uh, Forza Horizon series uh, who started their own new studio. Uh, any of these piquing your interest, Will? Um, you know, not really at all. Um, Star Citizen fuck off uh arkham trilogy no, creators fuck off uh um i don't know sorry <laughs> really? uh, only because they had their hands in suicide squad and that game's awful no um, no i think these guys well i i don't know but these are this is a separate studio from people who made the original game so i don't know how oops. much these people were involved with suicide squad before they left okay 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 i get you I, hear, I mean, Arkham Knight, not good. So Also that? Arkham Arkham Origins. Uh, they didn't do Arkham Origins. Um, PSVR 2, I will say, um, I was watching the Next Lander coverage of the State of Play recap, or State of Play, and um, Vinny said, oh, if they announce that PC adapter, I can finally play Half-Life Alex." And I went, I could, pl I could play Half-Life Alex. I forgot that was a game, and I have the Rift, Rift S. Is that what I have from you? Yeah. I have that from you, and I was like, I should play Half Life Alex. Oh, so you don't have a lot of room, though. I was gonna put Alex my computer. A a in, game. I was gonna put my computer in the in the out in the living room oh, and yeah. do it out there. Um, it can work and just have someone nearby to watch. Um, and then the Maverick game stuff. Uh, I don't like the Forza Horizon games. Um, so fuck off. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> wow, uh, you heard it here first. Will loves video games. Um, I, I think just running through here real quick, Star Citizen, the problem I have with Star Citizen is that I keep, I think they're actually making a good game. I hate to say it, but I keep seeing stuff on TikTok. And even the last time we played it, a lot of bugs, a lot of gaps, but there was some really cool stuff in there. I still hate their, their monetization model where you have to pay real world money to get ships and things. But the amount of content they have been adding and mechanics and seeing people enjoy those, you know, it looks really cool. Like I'm seeing I'm seeing people be like, oh, we landed our ship and we're raiding this base and we come out of the we come out of the base and we look up and somebody else has dropped into orbit and started bombarding us with missiles. And, mm. and it's like, that's really cool. Uh, so I think Star Citizen could actually end up being a good game. I think the only thing there's two things I need to do now. One, fix your fucking monetization model because it's dog shit. And number two, actually finish the game and release it. So yeah, I agree. They may. It feels like they're pulling a bit of a no man's sky here and that they may actually be pulling off something that a lot of people have lost hope in. Um, yeah. And no man's sky since done like 50 times more game yeah. since their failure but not actually gotten any better which is the well, interesting thing i mean at so. least for you for most people it has gotten a lot better uh most people have bad standards uh, uh, but i will also say with star citizen um i part of me feels like because eventually when the game comes out you'd just be able to buy 
Because all the buying the ships now is like the pre-order of the ships, or you're buying the thing for the ship. Like, when the game comes out, I think you can pay with whatever missions you do to buy ships. I don't think that's... I don't think that's guaranteed, though, because the other thing is if I pay ten thousand dollars for a ship and then the game came out and somebody could just grind and get that ship, I would be pissed. They have backed themselves into a really shitty corner where they have pandered to high rollers and in a way that they cannot appeal to normal gamers. So Mm. that's that's the thing is I I think I think it's probably going to be a combination of the two. But I think their eventual thing is that could is that when the game comes out, there's going to be mediocre ships that you can earn with in-game currency. But all those really expensive, really cool ships are still going to be tied to real money. Well, but at least I, is that is there not any like Eve Online system they've pitched where you're making real money? That's more of what I meant. Like not you can make I'm real money of. in the game. Oh, maybe not. As That's in, what well, not 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 real money, but. So the way Eve does it is that you can pay for your subscription using in-game currency. Mm. So they basically use that as a way of saying like $10 monthly subscription is X is a thousand isk or whatever. And so people use that as, as like converting back and forth. And there are black markets where you can literally say, you know, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars. Give me, you know, a hundred thousand isk or whatever. I assumed it would have something like that, but maybe, maybe it won't. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the big problem is that it, somehow it worked. Somehow it worked them pre-selling tens of thousands of dollars worth of content to people before the game even existed. But now they back themselves in a corner where those people will not be happy if you move to a more traditional in-game currency model. And the in-game currency folks are going to be super pissed if they're constantly getting ganked and scrubbed and 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 out outpaced by the people who are just dropping money on the game. So I don't know. Um, PSVR two adapter for the PC. That's kind of interesting because the PSVR two from everything I've heard is a very good headset. Mm-hmm. It is just not that good with hooking up to the PS five and the games catalog. And somebody made a very good point, which is that if this adapter does come out, the PSVR two at what is it? what did I say? what is it at five fifty? I thought it was six hundred. Um, I'll look it up. if you look it up real quick, the PSVR two at that price point with that quality of screen and PC support immediately becomes the best option for PC VR because the fucking Valve Index is like twelve hundred dollars all in. Uh, the Vive is outdated. Uh, a lot of the third party manufacturers are either making shitty three hundred dollar headsets or way too expensive multi thousand dollar headsets. Uh, you can do the Quest three. The Quest three works pretty well. But if you're looking for like a really high quality PC headset, the PSVR two is going to become basically the best on the market at that price point, um, which is crazy to think about. We're going to be in a world where when people want to play VR, it's either do you want standalone? It's Quest 3. Do you not want it? Could you do without standalone? Then buy a PSVR 2 and use it on your PC. So that's yeah. that's an interesting thing that hardware is not doing well, but this actually could open up the market for it a whole lot because of how good the hardware is. Uh, it is currently retailing. I can get uh, one on one GameStop.com for $400. That is the standard edition. Uh, and then... Yeah it's on best buy but i think that doesn't i don't know it's on best buy for five or 450 uh was 550 and that seems to come with other Somewhere things perhaps there. i'm not sure so go that's pick still, it up today a, ladies and gentlemen yeah that's still a very good price for that hardware if it actually does work with pc yeah as well as other vr headsets um at that point it's really just do you want a super high quality screen and uh eye tracking and you're okay with it not being standalone or do you want standalone and a slightly less screen with the quest 3 and those are two very good options right there so uh, this adapter coming out for pc support very smart from sony very very smart awesome uh movies and tv 
We've got three quick hits here. Uh, you know, lots of video game movies and TV uh, news nowadays. Uh, first up, the Just Cause movie, we've talked about it previously, has uh, is now officially in the works with Blue Beetle director Angel Manuel Sota. Um, it's being produced for Universal. We also have a Minecraft animated series in the works at Netflix featuring new characters. And Doom Guy, which is the John Romero biography that I believe came out last year, autobiography that he wrote and came out last year, is getting a documentary and a drama project. Uh, not clear if the drama project is going to be a movie or a TV series, but Doom Guy, life in first person, is getting both a documentary and drama treatment. Um, any of those piquing your interest, Will? Um, I'm excited for Doom Guy. I I forgot that book came out. I've been I was meaning to read it. Um, yeah. I've always wanted to read Masters of Doom. Uh, That's good. And they turned that into a TV show, or are turning that into a TV show? You know, I that wasn't that Seth Rogen that was going to do that. I think it already happened. Maybe, and it just kind of flew under the radar, or Masters maybe it died. Doom. Here we go. Oh no, that's the book. Um, yeah, TV movie, 2019. Oh, with a uh, bunch of people in it. Ah, um, I should watch that. No, uh, it doesn't. I don't see anything about uh, one Seth Rogen. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm excited for that. Uh, that seems kind of cool. I think those stories are getting old enough now where like mm -hmm. uh, we were like, you're like, oh, yeah, what is the real story about that? Because it seems so old. And you're like, oh, this is the real story. So that's neat. I, I, I'm interested. I, I think I'll probably read the book and not watch the show, but or the documentary. It's at least a documentary. It's more of my point, uh, and not yeah. like some dramatization of it. Well, it'll be both. Was the news that I said? What? Times. It's both. Insane. It's a documentary and a drama project. The drama is not clear if it's going to be a drama movie or a drama show. Oh, I see. Sorry, I missed that part. Apologies. Um, I'm excited for the Just Cause movie because I, I never watched Blue Beetle because it's a superhero movie and honestly, fuck those nowadays. But I saw the trailer multiple times and it actually looked really good. And I think the other thing about the Blue Beetle movie was that it felt like really it felt like a. It felt like a Hispanic movie. Because it had. It, it, it was it was like the best type of representation where it's like, yeah, Blue Beetle is a Hispanic superhero. So we're going to get Hispanic writers. We're going to get Hispanic actors and actresses. We're going to get a Hispanic director. And it feels like it feels like, oh, shit, like this feels actually real. It's not just a bunch of white people trying to do minorities like, no, it's actual representation. Um, and that's what it felt like from the trailers. I don't know how the movie actually worked out. I think I think the I think it had George Lopez in it too, and I'm a, I'm a big George Lopez fan. So it was like, y you know, you watch it and you're like, oh, this actually like looks like a like a a good example of representation in Hollywood. And Just Cause, if you remember, I believe the main character of Just Cause is from South America, and I believe at least the first two games took place in a nondescript South American country. So if they kind of lean into that and just kind of have this like this like you know je ne sais quoi like like uh south american like spy like uh, dos Equis, most interesting man in the world type vibe to it plus mm. like over the top action like the games have then yeah this could be a good time this could be really cool so i'm i'm looking forward to that i like just cause i like the first two games a heck of a lot i never finished the third and the fourth i've bounced off of a few times um that first game was very formative in my years of open world video games. Uh, but it just seems weird to make a movie based on those games. Their games have like zero plot that is good at all. Um, I would just, why wouldn't you just, it's so basic. Why wouldn't you just invent your own thing? Like this screams to me, someone trying to get a video game property for cheap because video game movies and TV shows are hot right now. And we should yeah. uh, make that. Um, I think all of the things you said are valid and cool, and I'm glad for more of that stuff. But I would rather just see an original movie starring, uh, like, a, a spy, a Hispanic spy, and all, all that sort of stuff. Like, I mean... It's just weird to, I think you're to tie it. I, I, uh, I see what you're saying, but I think you're completely wrong. <laughs> and here's why. This is not just another generic action movie. I think you're forgetting 
a everything that Just Cause does that is different from other action games and open world games, right? So it's it's the grappling hook. It's the tethering people and things together. It's the putting the little jet boosters on them. It's the jumping on top of cars to surf them and then dive in through the dive in through the, the driver's window. You know, the giant explosions, the jumping from everything, the parachuting, the wing shoot. I think there is enough really interesting, cool stuff there that you don't even need a good story. Like, let's be honest, uh, the. Wick, the John Wick movies stories mm -hmm. stories really dumb in those right yeah but because the action is so good they become entertaining i think that's what this is going to be it's no. not about it's the story it's going to be about really unique interesting action if it was any other property i would agree with you but i think there's enough interesting specific just cause stuff here that they need to that that it makes sense to make a just cause yeah. movie i guess i don't think they'll do any of that in these movies at all and really? I, I also think they could have just made up a new John Wick who's South American and it would have been the same movie. I don't. I think I, all of the I, things you mentioned, they might do a wink or nod to or have one like a set piece for it. But he's not going to be always using his grappling hook and doing the Rico thing. I like, hope you're wrong, though, because because that's that's what makes Just Cause unique. They need to lean into that because. Like, it needs to be the John Wick of action movies. It needs to be just crazy fucking stunts over and over this again. This movie needs to have a scene where he fall. If it's going to be a true John, uh, John Wick, Just Cause movie or TV show, whatever. It's a movie, right? If they're going to make a movie. Yeah. He needs to have a scene where he's falling at a great height, realizes he doesn't have a parachute, and just grapples to the ground and lives. Because you can do that in all the Just Cause games. It makes no sense. It's not how gravity works. Yeah, but that needs to be in this movie or it is not a just cause movie at all. One caveat, though, the reason why he's falling is because he was on top of something tall and an explosion threw him and off of it. So chaos, he has to ragdoll from, and it racked up how yeah. much chaos points he was getting. Yeah, he has to ragdoll for a little bit and then he has to look at the ground and grappling hook to the ground. Yes. Yeah. See, now you're getting on board. Now you're yeah. getting on board, but they're not going to do any of that. They're just going to call it Just Cause, and it's a movie that's already been written and already been filmed a little bit, and they're just now slapping this onto this yeah. and reshooting some scenes so they can call him Rico instead. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I do think, going back to the Fallout series, one of the things the Fallout series did really well yeah. is that you could tell 100% that, that a lot of the people that were decision makers and creatives on that show were actual Fallout fans. Almost, almost too to an extent where it was too much, but they were constantly making it just like the game, the visuals, the show and et cetera. That's what they need with this. They need actual just cause fans to be writing this movie, to be making this movie, to be coordinating the stunts because it has a particular style and feel and look to how those stunts are done. That needs to be in the series. So that's what this desperately needs. Yeah. It needs oh, no, just cause fans. Yeah. The way so, Fallout had Fallout fans. I think we should say I would love a just cause movie. I think my position on this is there's a 10% chance they make the movie yes. we both want. I get and that. And there's a 90% chance it's going to be garbage. But I think I know, but, that 10% that yeah. chance is only because of that Blue Beetle director. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm trying to think of why normally I would be in your shoes where I would be incredibly pessimistic. But I think it's just because of how much I like the Blue Beetle trailers and how unique and interesting those felt that I'm just automatically assuming that same type of verve and style and and emphasis will be put on just cause as an IP. Yeah. So I I for some reason I am I am incredibly optimistic about this. I kind of want to play a just cause game. You're right. Now. Oh, they're great. They're great podcast games. I should finish three. You you know to finish those games, all you have to do is just blow up everything on the map. Yeah, I know. I think I did like two or two of the islands. Man, I'm in a video game Sorry. rut right now. I need to figure out what to play. I have I. Sorry, I, I shouldn't bring my video game woes to this video game podcast. <laughs> uh, we shouldn't. It's just it's an ugly Anyways, side of gaming. Yeah, that's the news for this week. I do have a little bit. I have a little special something for you. OK. Did you know that the Windows 10 desktop background, the default one, was not computer generated, but was a picture of lasers being shot through an actual window. I did actually know that because Isn't it that, was on. And there's there's a whole video with it, too. Yeah, 
I think when this was the first time this was posted on Reddit, it was like four or five years ago. And I remember being like, holy shit, that's awesome. And you see the pictures yeah. and the videos and everything. And then I remember, I don't know if it was the first time or like the second or third time it got reposted is people being like, no, it's Photoshopped. You can see where it's Photoshopped. And then that discourse started up. But yeah, if, if people are unawares, go Google it because it is really cool. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people also saying like, why would they shoot it? That doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, there's all there's all video for it and everything. It's it's just wild. It's such an incredible image. That's cool. Yeah. It's like there's an account uh that does Mario facts and occasionally they'll post mm. actually I don't know if it's that account. It might be a different account, but they occasionally post like, hey, we found what nineties texture pack bundle the background in Chili Mountain in Super Mario 64 comes from. Or like this is nice. the wood texture from the side of the logs in whatever map or something uh and they post shit like that and i'm like you know that's just cool to know <laughs> like oh yeah it came from this texture pack that they just picked up from the cd store or whatever um it's very neat that's it for the news then nothing else no news yeah that's things? it wow that's crazy that's it wishlist spotlight time folks we get there at the end of the show first little wishlist spotlight thing is uh scald the black priory came out today which was a former wishlist spotlight from a couple of years ago uh it is currently on sale on steam for an amount of money uh but i think it has its like launch discount so go check it out that's the like uh ultima original ultima looking ones uh uh, uh D crpg type game uh it looks really fun and uh i was gonna buy it today and play it and then i just sat on the couch all day and painted a chain shop um for no reason so uh maybe i'll play it uh tomorrow we will see but this week's wishlist spotlight is um sof enemy from the future folks um firaxis isn't doing anything anymore so the indie game developers had decided to make xcom 3 uh and not wait for them to make it um uh, lead the SOS squad and defend the world against alien invasion, engage in thrilling turn-based battles, and uncover the mysteries of enigmatic extraterrestrials. This looks like uh, the uh, the more recent XCOM games uh, in the way the Xenonauts look like the old XCOM games. Uh, count me in on this when it comes out. Uh, in August 2024, uh, you are special forces of the Russian Federation combating aliens from the future. Um... Uh, it just looks like fun, and I'm excited for more XCOM-style games, especially uh, as I've been playing XCOM 2 uh, and losing all of my friends. So that's the wishlist spotlight. Go give them a wish list uh, so they can get uh, pushed up in the algorithm on Steam and people can recognize them. Uh, it should be fun. Nice. Uh, that's it for the show. I'm going to hit the end button, and we're going to get out of here. Folks, this is uh, Subpixel. You can find us subpixelfilms.com is where you can can you find us and all of our great great content. We will be back. I will be back possibly tomorrow for some XCOM 2 with unemployment enjoyment, but we will also be back this Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Jason and I are diving back into the the hallowed hallowed battlefield of Fired Emblem uh, and hopefully get through a couple more missions. Uh, and then Next week, we've got our regular shows. I think we've got another Quiz Me Baby next week. We've got uh, more yep. local chat and then something on the weekend. Uh, probably more Fired Emblem. Uh, look forward to that. I have been your host, Will Crossy. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. That's Ian Gibson. You can find him on Twitter at Think Gibson. Uh, have a wonderful, fantastic rest of your week. Uh, we are playing video games. We are having fun. Uh, you know, that's about it. So, uh, yeah. We'll see you all next week. Bye, everybody.